had a winning year in the very serious senior-oriented Kentucky team. Who will be the national champion? We'll unravel that story for you with the opening tip-off in just a moment. From Duke, number 33, a six-foot, seven-inch freshman from South Stoke, North Carolina, Kenny Gadar. the tap and it's Kyle Macy their quarterback number four inside immediately and knocked away as Roby tried to take it inside out of bounds to the Blue Devils of Duke. Duke in beating Notre Dame ran off to a big halftime lead 14 points built it to 16 early in the second half and held on for a four point win. Kentucky in this tournament oh, turnover Carroll made the pass Bernard was not there and understandably the first two possessions one aside wind up in turnovers Billy. Kentucky in a tight man-to-man -man defense. Phillips on Jaminski will be interesting. Duke on 1-3-1 one, one zone right off the bat. Macy with Phillips moving in and on to the post. High and low. Roby playing the side. Macy and Clater both outstanding shooters from outside. This is Clater from Plato, Ohio. Kentucky has about as many patterns against the zone as anybody in the country, and they work them all very well with good pace. Truman Clater. Rebound, Denard, one of the freshman forwards of Duke. Monarco, their playmaker, captain to Jaminski. Blocked beautifully, but a foul on Phillips of Kentucky. Good to stop it, Mike Phillips. It's really going to have to be aware of is the fact that Jaminski goes the length of the floor from offense to defense and vice versa as well as anyone in the country. Good catch. He's going up for the stuff. Phillips times it well, but he did hit it. All right, Phillips almost banged his head on the underside of the backboard. He was flying through. Jaminski. All-A students finished high school in three years. He has a couple of Bs at Duke University, but at 18, already a sophomore, they say he may become the best center ever in the ACC. And Duke takes the early 2 to nothing lead. Al, how important is it to get two up on the board? Well, it's very important for the younger team. I was just thinking of uh, Jaminski's high school coach. He must be very upset when he left after the shooting year. One on one, Roby on Jaminski, and he scores. Mike Roby, the All American big guy for Kentucky, and Jaminski, who rarely fouled, could not block the shot. And so it's just on the full court zone press against that. Jaminski, a good shot blocker. Panarco, not there. Jaminski rebounds, but he fouls in the process. First foul for Duke goes to Jaminski. Bill Foster, he was named co coach of the year by the Coaches Association. He and Abe Lemon, the stink owner, and your own colleague, Chick you as coach of the year. And on the other bench, Joe Hall, some say he should deserve it. A lot of good candidates for that. You can see Duke is not going to press unless they get a situation where they've just made a foul shot. Later with Denard. High low post right now with Phillips and Roby down in low. That's a tough twosome in there. Ten years ago, Al McGuire, you never used a pick 
uh, against the zone, but today that has even been added to the Kentucky offense. Yeah, they pick the high, the front line in the zone. They'll pick and go for the 15, 16 foot jump from the angle from the basket off the power line. And Dick, they're matching up right now. That's what's confusing Kentucky a little bit. Although it's a zone, they're taking men in the area, just as you see Spinaco going back on Slater. Good pass. Pass given. Can't hit. And the foul will be on Phillips of Kentucky. And that's his second. He is the most foul prone of the Wildcats. He fouled out five times this year. Billy, another look. There's an excellent pass to set this up by Slater. Good penetration right here. Sometimes you take one dribble too many, and that was the case there for Goose Gibbons. He went on in. Missed the shot, and there's the foul coming over the top. A 2-2 tie. We've played over two minutes. Carroll, hawked by Macy. A lot of big overplays right now. You're going to see some back doors coming. Phillips makes the steal, banks the beat. And he can't hit, and the foul is on Gene Banks of Duke. Phillips is down. I think he hurt himself on the fall. Banks was getting himself in position to draw the charge as opposed to trying to make the block, but Phillips took it all the way in. Now, Phillips really not the kind of guy you want in the open field, but he saw this. Now, there's Banks trying to get position. What Phillips did is a very good maneuver. There's where he hit his hip falling down. Very yep. good maneuver as he went ahead and went sideways to the back. You know what happened? Banks kind of thought of his 240, 50 pounds. He kind of moved at the last second. That's why they called it a block instead of a charge. Now, Mike Phillips from Manchester, Ohio. He broke all of Jerry Lucas's Ohio prep record. And Kentucky leads 4-2. to two. The obvious question, Al McGuire, do both teams seem tight to you? Yes, this is a, a way a championship game usually starts. They fought another minute or so, they should relax. Great give and go, but Denard misses the layup. So Spinarkel and Denard have missed layups the last two times down. Gibbons can't score, but he was fouled. But Narco, number 34 of Duke, gets the foul, and that will send Goose Gibbons to the line. Gibbons needs only three points to become only the second player in Kentucky history to score 2,000 points. And there he is. He's sitting on 1,997, but a great four-year star he's been. Dick down the other end of the court with a tough pressure that Kentucky's putting on man-to-man. -man. Duke is going to have to go ahead without the ball, backdoor a lot, try to hit the man the high post and cut off, as was the case for Denard before. Teams that overplay this way just force you to take away your normal offense. Gibbons makes it 5-2. to two. Gibbons raised in Lexington, went to Bryan Station High School. You see the eye of the state of Indiana outline in the middle of the court. This is the Indiana University home court. It was transported from Bloomington here to St. Louis for this tournament. A rare miss by Gibbons and Jaminski rebounded for Duke. Blue Devils had only one field goal in nearly three minutes. Inside, Jaminski, foul, Roby, or is it Phillips? Uh-oh, Phillips has oh, his third. Excellent positioning by Mike Jaminski, although he's just a sophomore, he sure has great court sense and savvy. Gets position, doesn't hold or push off, good call by the official. Jaminski is an amazing young player. And thus far, Joe Hall has not made a move to substitute for Phillips with three. Dick, I believe that Kentucky plays better with one center, either Phillips or Gibbons. We're going to see Jaminski, five to four. We're going to see James Lee in there quickly. He's over on the sidelines already, and Joe Hall talking to him. That makes him a lot quicker, and you don't give up much on the boards when you put Lee in the game. Gibbons open his Slater, and he rattles it home. Truman Slater has his first bucket, and it's 7-4. to four. Kentucky leads, approaching the 16-30 mark of the first half. Banks, a powerful freshman from Philadelphia. A long drop for Banks. And Phillips gets the rebound for Kentucky. The Wildcats on the move, leading by three. <laughs> Kentucky with Kyle Macy, they just beautiful to watch against the zone with their attack. They're very patient. They get into their various sets. There you see Macy going to the corner. Got the jump shot. Phillips open. This is an easy one. Rebound banks. Panarco has no advantage. So he'll slow it up. Pass deflected by Slater. And the score is 7 to 4 as James Lee, number 32, comes to the next field. Head coach of Duke 
He's 47 years of age, his fourth year, a banner season beyond his expectations. For Joe Hall, it's been a tough year for a man who has coached the team to 29 and 2. He said it yesterday, pressure consistently on me to win, 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 and I have to win this one. I think, I think this game breaks down to Duke wants to win, Kentucky got to win. That's well put, Al. 7 to 6 as Pinarco hits his first hoop. We have 15 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. Arkansas beat Notre Dame for the third place honors on a last second shot by Brewer. Macy drilled from the corner. Nine to six, Macy's first basket. Nothing will beat his own attack any better than hitting these jumpers from the corner and Macy and Clayton both did it. Nearly a five second count batted away by Gibbons of Kentucky. Gibbons is the complete player, Johnny Wooden. The ex-UCLA coach paid him the high compliment. He's not only a great scorer, second best in Kentucky history, but an outstanding defensive player. Many fans overlook that count. Away from the ball, the foul is on whom? Truman Plater of Kentucky holding Spinarkle. Spinarkle has been playing in the tournament with a bad ankle. That was a set play by Duke, trying to break Truminski long and then set a screen for Spinarkle going for the lob. And Spinarkle may have injured himself. He'll be attended to as we have a timeout here at the Checker Dome in St. Louis for the NCAA championship after four and a half minutes. Kentucky 9, Duke 6. We return to our studios for this message. Spinarkle appeared to suffer a cut on his elbow in that last fall, but obviously nothing serious. And we see no tape or bandage. It's 9 to 6, Kentucky. Duke's ball, 15 minutes plus remaining first half. With James Lee in the ball game, they match up to Duke's personnel. There's the same play. Well, well conceived, but Roby was right in the spot. Roby did the good job, and there's Denard stealing it for Duke. What a play by Denard. Banks, Benarco, Benarco to Banks. And now Jeminski. Rebound, Banks. He can't hit. Both teams missing some fairly easy shots. Roby ripping down the rebound. Kentucky. Good pass. Out of bounds to Kentucky. What's, it, what's happening, happening, Dick, to Kenny Denard? He's staying down court and trying to steal the pass. And we're going to see a play right here. Uh, inside, Kenny Denard does steal that one. Straight hands inside. Gives the ball up very well. Duke really not running as well as they did before. Live action. Jack Gibbons makes it 11 to 6 Kentucky. The Wildcats have their biggest lead. Five points. Inside the bank, good fake. It'll count if it goes, but it doesn't drop for Banks as the foul is on Kentucky. Joe Hall, 60 years, 134 games. Gibbons, perhaps his premier player. He's been so consistent, has his first foul. Dick, if Kentucky moves up to eight points, they're going to go to the 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's going to make it very difficult for Duke then because if they're so big, they take you out of your range and only get one shot against their 1-3-1 one, one zone. Banks drops it in there. His nickname is Tinkerbell because of his good humor. He's a happy man, and, well, he can fly, too, for that matter. What I think is happening to Duke right now, being a young team, emotionally, they're exhausted. Now, in another minute or so, they should be able to get their composure again. Kentucky a little bit more used to this kind of pressure situation. Well, Banks, two free tosses, his first points of the game. Cut Kentucky's lead to three, 14-41 left. Kentucky easily breaks the press. Roby helping out at midcourt. As you know, Billy, we'll be taking a player to receive the Gillette Most Valuable Player of the Game Scholarship Award, and tonight that honor is worth five thousand dollars. One three one half court zone press now, Duke. They change their defense a little bit, much more active out here. Later sets up to Lee. James Lee ramps it home. He loves the power dunk. There's experience for you, Dick. They saw the defense, recognized it, and just executed perfect. Harold, Johnny Gunn, they call him. High arch in there. Harold, who rarely shoots, bangs home his first bucket, and it's 13 to 10, Kentucky. You made a good point there, Dick. He very rarely shoots, but you know what? He takes a lot of big shots in the game, which is very unusual. In the corner, Kyle Macy, and he hits again. Macy, the sixth race sophomore from Peru, Indiana. Kentucky by five for Macy. Can't hit. Rebound, Roby. It's Slater, and the foul is on Slater. Good call. Denard had established position, and Slater did have one step. 
It was a good pass by Clater. He split the zone. Lee took it in there, and he really is a great player inside. Al McGuire, they say Lee's power dunk. They call it the Ernest Hemingway dunk. Why? Because when he ramped it home, it shatters the whole building and the earth moves. Oh, for whom the bells toll. <laughs> <laughs> 15 to 10. Oh. Kentucky leads Duke. The young Blue Devils trying to ward off the Wildcats, number one in the nation. Suttis into the ballgame now. Bill Foster looking for a little shooting. Barnard <laughs> Sinarco can't hit. And Duke very cold. 13 10 and a turnover. And Lee gave Sinarco a little shove up to say, You go get it because it's going to belong to you. Joe Hall didn't want that pass thrown right there. He's got a working margin, 15 to 10. He'd like him to be a little bit more solid. Number that was 21, excuse me, Al. The number 21, Bob Bender, comes into the game for Duke University at a guard position. Bender played on the Indiana team that won the NCAA championship two years ago. Transferred at midseason. There's that oh. jump on it. Jump this case, jump hook, makes it 15 to 12. He has six. Great shot. Roby is a good defensive player also. He played seven minutes. Inside, Roby blocked Ooh. by Suttis. Basket is good. Roby showing his power. The ball was blocked for a moment, and he still scored. Good Look at pass. This angle. Good pass on the inside. Actually, that was a case right there where Banks was not in the passing lane. But Roby showed a great power move there and just overpowered Suttis. Duke cannot play a 1-3-1 zone against the... Uh, Kentucky, they're too powerful on the knee. That's right now what's happening is the baseline man is going to be a real bad disadvantage. They'll probably go back to the 2-3 they used earlier. Knocked away by Gibbons. What hand? And almost stolen by Roby. Kentucky playing some tough defense out there man to man. Bender inside to Kaminsky. Knocked away. Gibbons came up with a loose ball. Kentucky down court with a five-point lead. Here's a big pass. If they hit this, they'll go to that 1-3-1 one, zone. One, Let's see what happens. 19 to 12, seven point lead for Kentucky, their biggest margin. It comes to 12 minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half. Now Kentucky stays in the man-to-man. -man. Now they might be thinking their man-to-man -man is so effective. Bad shot, but he got fouled. James Lee had a piece of it. And another freshman, Jim Sutton from College Park, Georgia, went up for that jumper. And Lee didn't like the call. His father is a Baptist minister in Lexington, Kentucky. He looks mean, but oh, is he tapioca inside. <laughs> Probably the best six, uh, six man in the country. Um, I'm talking about the guy from Kentucky. James, James Lee. 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 Well, he really made their team a lot different when he came in there. A reminder that on Sunday, April 9th, that's two weeks from yesterday, NBC Sports World will feature from the University of Kentucky the USA All-Stars against the Russian team, USSR. Some of the great players for them from this Kentucky team will be featured 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific Time. That's two weeks from yesterday. Sutton has his first point. He's averaging two and a half points a game. From Woodward Academy in College Park, Georgia. That's only two and a half points a game, Dick, but this young man has really come on well, and he's another freshman on their ball club that really has some fun. Well, you know he's a standstill shooter. For him to get a shot off, one of his teammates have to pick him up. And that's one of the reasons, of course, the 1-3-1 one, one might be just exactly what he wants. He's coming out of the game. Bill Foster saying, well, they're going to play man-to-man. -man. I've rested Denard long enough. Full court press. The score is 19-14, not 19-15, and the foul is on Fender of Duke. Denard went out. Or that, that Denard is in for Jim Suttis for Duke University. That was a sweat foul, high school foul. Now they're dropping out of that press. The press really hasn't been very effective, primarily because Macy sees up court so well. Al, so far, it appears the officials are letting him play. Yeah, they're, they're doing an excellent job. There's the 2 3 zone. They've gotten out of the 1 3 1 because of that power inside. There's Roby. Oh, a nice move, but he can't score. Rebound by Getch. Knocked away by Scheidler of Kentucky. So Joe Hall has made three substitutions. The uh, Scheidler, number 25, a sophomore. 32 Lee, also into the game. And for Duke, it's Fender. And number 44, Scott Getch, a six time junior from Chatsworth, California, who has replaced Kaminsky. Bill Foster uses substitutions to give fellas rest for about a minute and a half. Been able to get by without a deep bench. A foul called on Gibbons of Kentucky, his second. Now Jack Gibbons, one and one now, Dick. 
Already, Kentucky has in one battle. It comes with 11 minutes, 25 seconds left in the half. Duke has five team fouls. So to the line goes Bender, I believe. No, it's going to be no one wants. Well, actually, what happened, it was a man without the ball that was fouled. And so you see Gene Banks going to go to the line, but I don't believe it was Gene Banks' foul. Banks, 71% free throw shooter. 19-15, Kentucky. Chuck Alexinas, a 6'10 freshman from Morris, Connecticut. They just go down to that bench and pull out another guy, don't they, Al? Kentucky's number 50. They seem to pull out a Clydesdale each time. <laughs> <laughs> so right down for that. Press really hadn't been affected as far as father in Kentucky at all. Scheidler threw Alex Sinus his hands, and Bender comes up with it, and he is fouled by Alex Sinus, the big number 50. He's a giant young man, 6'10 and 250. It's interesting that Alex Sinus 6'10 is from Connecticut, a freshman, and so is Jaminski. He went to Monroe, Connecticut. Two big men from a state not known for producing a lot of basketball talent. They've had their good ones. Here are two that have migrated away and potential big stars. You know what's very important about making a pass like that, Al? You've got to remember who's on the catching end. Normally, they'd have Roby catching that ball. Alex Sinus doesn't have the same kind of hand. Well, he, well, he just committed to the game, too. He's a freshman. He's a little nervous. The coaches are nervous. We're nervous. The fans are nervous. Bender rattles it home. Remember, Duke is the best free throw shooting team in the nation this year. Kentucky's in the top ten. So far, they're nine for nine. So Duke, ten for ten. That kept them in the game. They trail by only one. It's interesting to see how long Bill Foss is going to stay with that, that full court press. Roby helping out, throws oh. it away. First one tonight. Intended for Lee and Duke. Leading 2-0 off the opening bell has a chance to get the lead for the first time since. There's the case Lee didn't come to the ball that time. He was open. Duke's press, they don't try to steal the ball. They wait for you to throw it away. Jaminski can't hit a 15-footer. This is Scheidler. Oh. He's got a clear pass. Good move. And it's tipped in by Roby. Rick Roby with a left hand follows it in for the Wildcats. There's the value of the big man that'll be willing to run down the court. Roby and Jaminski do it better than any two big guys around. I thought Bender made a little mistake in the club on the right of going back and, and protecting the basket. Banks trying to get inside. Double team clears it to Spinarco. Bender. <laughs> Jaminski blocked, but a foul is on Lee of Kentucky. Lee is so strong, he blocked the ball, but when he came through on the block, he hammered the shooter. And Bill Foster looks at that scoreboard 21-18. Super camera work from up top. Excellent touch passing that time by Bender. May have charged Roby before that play. And there's Lee coming through. And you're right, Dick. He's so strong with those ham hock arms of his. He just ran right through to me. What would you call a player like that, Al? I told it hammering a guy to the floor with your elbow. <laughs> his elbow caught his head that time, not his hand. Jaminski and Duke. Perfect from the line. Jaminski now three for three. Duke is a team 11 for 11. And the sophomore, 18 years of age, looking for his eighth point. Boy, they, you give them free crosses, and that's what they are. They're three points for Duke. 21 20. Duke, 12 of their 20 points from the free throw line. Back to the 2 3 zone. Now they're really changing up, trying to find the defense that they're comfortable with. It's an active zone, and watch how they try to keep their hands up to make those passing lanes look close. Duke playing much better out of the 2 3 than they were the 1 3 1. Levon Williams, number 52, is in for Kentucky. He's the sophomore from Denver, Colorado, 6 6. You watch Kyle Macy change their offensive pattern to go to the high low. There it was right there. Lee misses. Jaminski rebounds. And Duke again, trailing by one. We're at the halfway mark for this first 20 minute. interesting play. Gene Banks really showing you how explosive a young man here he is. There he goes. We couldn't see the legs right there, but they call walking on the play, but it was a great move. 
should have gave him a trance for a three and a half steps. Really. <laughs> oh. Time out here in St. Louis, Missouri, where Kentucky leads Duke by one. As NBC Sports wraps up this exciting collegiate basketball year, golf and, of course, baseball are ahead. First order of business, the Greater Greensboro, next Saturday and Sunday. And that will be followed by the Dinah Shore Colgate Classic from the Palm Desert area of Southern California. And don't forget, in that one, Arnold Palmer will be shooting for a hole-in-one that will be worth $1 million to someone. 21-20 Kentucky, a big play when Banks had a possible three-point play, but Travis. Nick, there you see Kentucky changing their pattern. Now they want to get a man on the high post. Loose ball, and Williams picked it up. Kaminsky rebounds for Duke, the big guy averaging 10 a game. Kentucky doing a great job getting back against the break, which has been one of Duke's best plays in the entire playoff. Bernard averaging around 10 points a game. Duke now has rested everyone. Great pass to Spinarco, but he can't handle it cleanly. Does he save it? No, his foot was on the line. Jim Bain, the official, right there to call it. And let's hope Spinarco's all right, helped off the Kentucky bench. That's joining the camp of the enemy. Considering the score 21-20, that's not very a good idea to try that lob in here. What do you think, Al? Well, I think the one that stopped it was Macy. He came over and stood still and made uh, Pinocchio look down. That's why he dropped the ball. It would have been called for charge otherwise. Jimmy's got the good hands. Not a great leaper. Tough play to make up. Yeah, but Kentucky from the weak side, they come over and block. Kentucky has scored only two points in the last three minutes. Roby, and he was slapped. You could hear that one. Good right ball. here at courtside. I believe it was Denard who got a hand on his wrist. That'll send Rick Roby to the line for Kentucky as Denard has his first foul. Roby, all Southeast Conference, second team All American. Well, you can see why Duke might be doing well. Debbie Ridley, she may be the first female manager to make it to the finals. Uh, time to change. <laughs> I think we'll uh, pass on that and go on with the ball game. <laughs> Roby trying to make one out of two. So Kentucky is four for seven. Duke is a perfect 12 for 12. That's the difference, although Kentucky leads by two. Ron Williams on Gene Banks. I think Gene Banks would like to have that ball a little bit. Scheidler reaching in, and the foul is on Jay Scheidler of Kentucky. Al, it is very warm here in the Checker Dome. It was warm in the first game, and with all these active fans, uh, I wonder if that might not be a factor as we look ahead. Well, if anything, it's going to drain. It has to hurt Duke because their bench isn't as long as Kentucky. One of the key things about heat, as long as your locker room is not warm. Years ago, when people uh, used to play games in basketball, they'd push the heat up in your locker room. They come out for the second half, and you were a basket case. You mean if you were the home team, you kept yours cool and had the heat yeah. on in the other. That was the first miss by Duke, and it remains 21-20. Scheidler and Macy outside for Kentucky. James Lee, not there. Denard with a rebound. A 6-7 forward from King, North Carolina. Town so small that uh, he says, I don't know how many we have, around 100. <laughs> oh, it's bigger than that now, Nick. He said they just got their first traffic light, and it also serves as the only street light in town. Thanks. Hi, oh. Duke. He wanted that ball. He's been wanting it the last three times down the floor, and they finally got it to him. Dean Banks with six points. Tie a knot at 22 with eight minutes left in the first half. You have to watch Macy try to dissect this goal. The foul will be on Denard for bumping in to the shooter, Roby. Roby scores. Here's Gene Banks trying to get open. Really rubs off the screen well. Uses both Roby and Jaminski. Gets the ball. He wanted for a long time. Went up with a jumper and right on the money. Well, that's a tough two points here. And Denard goes out with his second foul. And at the line, Roby shooting for the three-point play. Jim Suttis, the freshman, 6'6". Number 30 is in for Duke. Kenny Denard leads the NCAA in floorboard burns. Burns? Burns? <laughs> you know the thing about Rick is the fact that when he gets that ball inside, he explodes to the basket. It's, you know, he plays like he's about 6'5 or 6', but at 6'10", it's just amazing what a fine athlete he is. Roby has his 10th point of the game. He set a new Kentucky record this year. Field goal percentage, well over 60%. That's a good rub off screen on the inside. Banks can't oh, hit. Oh, he, he goes down. down heavily. And the 
the foul is on James Lee. You talk about two power players. James Lee, 32, 6'5", and about 230 for Kentucky, and Gene Banks. Boy, look at somebody just cut open their skin and put iron inside there for Muscle. But Lee's three years older than Banks, and uh, you can imagine what Gene Banks is going to be in the senior year at Duke. That's third on Lee, and of course, I think Phillips also has three. So those are the interchangeable keys for Kentucky. A little bit of a problem here in the first half. A lot of time remaining. Banks trying to cut into Kentucky's three-point lead. Rather unusual foul shot for a powerful man. He spreads his feet uh, very wide. Really anchors himself. Yeah, you should only put your feet as wide as your shoulders. 25-24. Banks a perfect six for six from the line. Has a total of eight. And the zone defense uh, full court changes to a 2-2-1 two -two type press now. Really showing a lot of different strategies. Nice pass, and it's given over to Minsky. Oh, what a soft He's touch. automatic from there. 27-24, the Wildcats with 7 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Kentucky has led almost throughout. Kaminsky, he has to have room to come down. Scheidler did not give him room to get his feet on the floor. Scheidler kind of settled underneath him. It was an excellent call by the official. Scheidler has his second foul to the dismay of Joe Hall, the head coach of Kentucky. Rick Roby, a little bit out of position that time. He got picked off by his own man. Excellent pass. Bill Foster, his wife Shirley, father of four daughters. What a year it's been. He didn't even know if he'd get into the tournament. Here he is in the final game, and his young team is behind by only two. Kaminsky is five for five from the line today. He's always been a good coach, Dick. Matter of fact, he also is an ice cream addict. At Rutgers and at Utah, fans there will recall bringing winners to those universities. In comes number 44, Kentucky, Fred Cowan. He's a 6'8 freshman from Sturgis, Kentucky. Well, if you were a backcourt man and had that kind of view of the defense, you probably could score every time. Great job with our cameras. We have 10 different cameras shooting the action of this 1978 championship game. Scheidler. Oh, a 22-footer by Scheidler. Makes it 29-26. He went home on Friday night. His mother's seriously ill. Didn't sleep much. Had a big game Saturday. There's the 1-3-1 one -one zone now for the first time by Kentucky. They do it with a three-point lead. And there's the turnover, and it's Roby, the 6'10 senior, bringing it up for it. Holds up well. Scheidler, he wants it. It's short. Rebound. Cowan blocked Kaminsky. Just tipped it away on the upward flight. Great block by Kaminsky. Never knocks that ball out of bounds. He just goes up softly and gets a piece of it. Duke really needs to change their lineup in the ballgame right now, but there's their shooter, Sutton. Goes over the back of the board, out of bounds to Kentucky. Getting a little physical, and the official warning Roby and Getz to take it easy as they were in a shoving match. Joe oh, Hall is taking Scheidler out, letting him sit down. Scheidler was so pumped up, he just wanted that shot. Truman Plater has replaced Scheidler in the backcourt for Kentucky. Six minutes remaining before the intermission. Well, it's interesting how Bill Foster has been using his substitutes, giving everybody about a minute and a half rest periodically. He's booing them on the clock, Billy. That's to keep him fresh. Also, the shotgun, the foul. Benarco made the play, and that's Benarco with the ball, and he Ooh. scores. That's why he's regarded as one of the top players in the country. He leads his team in fields. He deflected the pass. Duke got it, and it paid off for Benarco as he had the honors at the other end. One point game. Five minutes and 40 seconds remaining. First half. Given great thing. Oh! oh. Divine drives at home. It never appeared that ball was high enough to go home. That shot was unbelievable. He didn't go more than four or five inches above the rim that he can. And he made the great fake and made the jump shot on the way down. Super play. He had three men in the air on the fake. Three point lead for Kentucky. Five minutes remaining. First half. Looking for the lob pass, but without Banks and Denard in the game, it's not available. Panarco outside, tip to Minsky, side oh. play. <laughs> he went up, found the basket, and kissed it off the glass. 31-30, to Minsky with 11. We'll see him in Russia in 1980 on NBC. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was just two great jump shots that we saw in a row there. Later, looking for.
for help. The cool Macy, a sophomore, into Gibbons. He scores Ooh. again. Goose Gibbons, he's only 6'4", a forward. What a player. He has 11. He did a smart thing there, Al, by not putting the ball on the floor. He's shooting it right to the face. Yeah. He said, there's one right in your face. Right back at you. Pettis passes up a good shot, so Bender fires. He can't hit. Rebound, gets foul is on Get. Oh, that could have gone either way. Yeah. And Bill Foster say, hey, let's go into more revolving offense. Foster, both teams in a one and one now. Foster attended Bloomsburg State. That's near where you grew up, isn't it? Not too far away. State of Pennsylvania. There's one of the Al McGuire faithful here to watch the action. 33 <laughs> 30. He asked for your autograph three times. <laughs> that matches some of the clothes he wears when he walks around. Oh, town. Billy, Billy. Oh, <laughs> God. I don't want to get into that. Jack Gibbons hit the line. You dress goose. like ass's pet horse, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a texture. Gibbons rattles it home. He has 12 points for Kentucky. Well, he's, he's been the difference here in the first half. Great performance. Dick Ember with Al McGuire, Billy Packer with the Checker Dome in St. Louis. The championship game, the NCAA, and Kentucky has a five-point lead, 35-30, as we have a timeout call. Four minutes, 19 seconds remaining in the first half. The top-rated Wildcats lead the Final four, Cinderella Duke. Bye-bye. Well, Dan, there's one more big game left here on NBC Sports in this college basketball year. Some of our all-stars against the Russians. Two weeks from yesterday, listen to the names involved. Bailey of Rutgers, Bird of Indiana State, Carol of Purdue, Gibbons of Kentucky, Lee, Macy, Roby of Kentucky, Gerald Griffin of Boyville, Irvin Johnson of Michigan State, Sidney Moncrief of Arkansas, David Greenwood, UCLA, Bill Ford, and Michael O'Corn of North Carolina, and they'll be coached by this man, Joe Hall, who has said this has been a season without celebration for us. So much has been expected. We have to win tonight. That's a tough road to follow right there, isn't it, Al, to be under that kind of pressure? Well, coaches are tremendous competitive individuals. When you go to a heavyweight program like Kentucky, you're expected to win. But in Joe's six years, he's averaged over 22 wins a, uh, a season. Coach Ruff in over 40 years uh, averaged 21 wins a season. But uh, he's uptight. Uh, I don't think he's going to leave Kentucky. There's been rumors in the papers that he would. But I just think it's been a long season, and he just needs a rest. 2-3 zone now by Kentucky for the first time tonight. They're changing things up themselves after the timeout. Spinarkle inside, and the foul is on Spinarkle for charging. Good play by Gibbons. He's doing everything right in the first half. There's Ball. He's 49 years of age. He said, regardless of what happens tonight, I'll be feeding my cattle on the farm tomorrow. I have a feeling if he wins tonight, he won't have time for the herd. 35-30 Kentucky with three and a half minutes remaining in this first 20-minute period. Both teams using the same defense now at 2-3. Jaminski's up a little bit higher in his team. Duke trying to check Kentucky, but the Wildcats can afford to be patient. They have the lead, five points. Three minutes, 14 seconds remaining. They see the traffic stop in the Kentucky offense. And that's given. He can't hit, tapped out. Spinarco's quick hands come up with it for Duke. Denard to Harold. Bernard is open. Inside is Jaminski. Bernard. Nice play by Duke. Very patient. Good passing, but what you've got to point out for Kentucky is the fact that they're not giving Duke any uncontested layups on that play. Getting back beautiful. Given to William for Cowan it is. That's Plater in the corner. Too long. Spinarco and the break for Duke is on. Great pass to Denard. The Herald to Denard. Inside. And he's on the baseline. That's a tough break for the Blue Devils. He went too far. And they're trying to make some passes that really weren't there. In contrast to the pressure under Joe Hall, this man can smile. Bill Foster, his team has gone much farther than he expected. He's going to go home a hero tonight regardless. That's the way life is. Uh, he'll probably be given a lifetime contract tonight. But what happens, you build a monster and ends up beating you. Coach Ruff has built the monster, and Joe Hall determined to take it over. He was on Coach Ruff's staff, and it's just the way of life in coaching. 
Phillips missed the shot and Duke had it, but again, it was Denard dribbling the ball on that red baseline. Kenny Denard, such an emotional basketball player. Both times he tried to rip the ball up instead of just batting taking it. 35-32 Kentucky. We're down to the two-minute mark. Un that. Unusual lineup that Kentucky has in the game right now. There's a pick, and Gibbons hits it again. He's made four in a row. There's using a pick off his own defense. 15 for Gibbons. What a first half for the senior. Benarco in a crowd oh, makes it in. Oh. Three men on him, and Benarco rams home his eighth point of the game. He's definitely a keeper, Bill. He has his in his hands, and he says he's so cool. They say the fine student. He goes to the Scholastic the way he plays the game. He's solid, consistent, works hard. Dipped in by Gibbons. He is everywhere. How many 21s are there out there in a white uniform? When the ball goes in to Phillips, nobody coming back in from the outside to cut him off. Therefore, he's got a lot of time to operate. Benarkel inside. He can't hit. Gets his own rebound, and he is fouled by Phillips. And that'll be the fourth. I think Mike Phillips of Kentucky. Boy, what determination. Wow, amazing. And, of course, he played with another guy, and everybody always talks about this. It's Mike O'Corn from North Carolina. They played on the same high school team. With their both uh, great determination type attitudes, it must have been beautiful to watch them in high school. Well, that's a lonely sweep when you get four fouls in the first half. Monarco, a great free throw shooter, the best in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year, hitting over 86%, leads his team in scoring, and free throw shooting, and assists, and in steals. Ten points for Spinarco. There's the press back, first time in a while, that Duke has been able to employ it. Yeah, it's a focus press, Billy. It's not a serious type thing. They're just trying to break your rhythm. Gibbons to Roby. Macy, they're looking for Gibbons. He's been the man that has shot them into the lead, and there he is again. Oh, tough break, but oh. look at Williams. He misses, tips, and Denard has it. Who fouls? It is Roby or is it Williams? Williams of Kentucky. LeVon Williams, a 6 6 jumping jack from Denver, Colorado, has his first foul. They're talking about Bill Foster. He's been wearing the same navy blue blazer vest and plaid slack since his team beat Clemson in the first round of the ACC tournament. Don't ask him why change. He says, well, it's just getting to smell good. <laughs> Putting the corner stands up by itself. <laughs> well, it's been all winning, and you know the feeling. You wore that blue blazer a long time last year. Yeah, last uh, seven games, and when the season was over, I gave it to a... Uh, Educational channel, and they auctioned it off for $550. I knew it was that much. I think they get more for Foster. 39, 37, oh, for the oh. final seconds. ACC Billy. <laughs> Eugene Banks. He said he would have gone to the University of Pennsylvania, but they do not do not have the freshman eligible rule. How does that make you feel if you're the Penn head coach? Same thing with Butch Lee and Marquette. He was supposed to go to Pennsylvania, but he didn't want to go with the freshman rule. Listen to this. Duke University in the first half has made 20 of 21 free throws. They missed only one, and they trailed by only one. 51 seconds, now 49. Let's see if Kentucky pulls it on out close to the last shot. A lot of time left. Couldn't ask for more in this first 20 minutes. If they don't get one off soon, they'll probably pull it back out. They'll shoot soon, though. Gibbons had a knock away, controls it, and he scores oh. it. And he then sensational. Jack Gibbons has 17. They get 19 for Gibbons. Long stretch that time by Jaminski. 20 seconds left in the half. Dump it inside to Jaminski. Can't get up a good shot. Great Rebound. block out by Roby. Roby. Time for Kentucky to add to its lead. It's Gibbons again. Oh, my. What a play by Jack Gibbons. Six seconds. Five seconds. And the foul is on who? The big call here. It could be either man. They're pointing at both of them. It's a big call it's right very here. Very important, this call. Yes, Thanks for giving. Who is it? You got a five-point spread here. It's big. It's a big, big it's call. On. What do we have? He hasn't uh, given us a signal yet. And apparently it's on Duke University. That's so Gibbons will go to the other end. That could be close to close in the game. The, so many games have won in the last few seconds of, of, the, of the first half. You see the play coming up right here. There's now three seconds on the clock. You're going to see Banks go in. He pulls up, 
Going to try to slide through. Gibbons was there. Good call by the official. As long as your feet are there, you can move your body then because he definitely shifted his body into the man while he was in midair. He was in position. Boy, that's a big, big turnaround when you consider how many points were scored by Kentucky in the last 15 seconds. By Kentucky, by Jack Gibbons. That's he right. is Mr. Kentucky. He has 21 points to match his number in this first half. You hear him chanting in the background, goose, goose, goose. Three seconds remaining. Gibbons with a one and one. And there was a case where you had the experienced Jack Gibbons against the freshman Gene Banks. Banks probably should have pulled up and take the jump. They went to the last shot. Either go in five down or possibly three down. They're in a nice right. position. Now they're gambling. They might go in seven down. But there's three seconds left. As we said many times, that means there's more than three seconds. And now one thing that Duke has to be careful of is the fact that Kentucky may press right here and go right after him trying to get the inbound steal. They can't be careless. I doubt whether they'll do that, so he goes through the one and one. Here they go. 23 points in the Oh, half. what a pass. Ah. And he'll throw it back the other way. Well, it's been given to by the Look at the Kentucky faithful. And they stand and cheer. They're Wildcats and Jack Gibbons. Interesting too the way Joe Hall is playing. Interesting too the way Joe Hall is playing against the two three. Now he's put Lee down in low right in front of Jaminski. There's Gibbons. He misses, but Lee there, and it's tipped in by Gibbons. There's Gibbons. He's going to make Joe Hall smile yet. Let's play one on one. Spinaco against Gibbons. Twenty-five points for Gibbons. Jaminski not there. Tipped in by Kenny Denard, number 33 of Duke. He's first point for the game. Now that's the first time Duke's been able to capitalize against the 1-3-1 by having good baseline rebounding himself. So they send him the second man in the baseline. Duke is surprisingly good. I thought this dream would end tonight, but it doesn't look like it's going to end. Truman Plater hits a 20-footer for his fourth point of the game. And Kentucky leads 5-5. Boy, a fast pace. Second half, two minutes gone. Inside the banks, and he's fouled by Lee. That'll be four on James Lee, and he has replaced Mike Phillips, who also has four. Critical foul for Kentucky, because Lee was really playing a strong ball game in the low post. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a tough part of our business. Apparently, before the game tonight, there was a call to a TV station and here to the arena threatening the life of this player, Gene Banks. The police are aware of it. The security is very heavy. The coach knows, the coach of Duke, is delicate in reporting a live news event. But that's what we have, and it's unfortunate this becomes a part of tonight's story. Gene Banks does not know. That's really a sick situation for a beautiful thing here like the NCAA championship where everything is really wholesome and healthy. Banks looking for his 11th point. That was his first miss from the line. He made all eight in the first half and misses them both. There again, Kenny Denard staying down for a little bit too late. They thought they had a walk-in violation. And technical a technical foul. foul on Bill Foster. You hate to see that in a championship game, don't you, Al? That, that, that was a quick call. A lot of times when the coach gets hit for the technical, it means he's right because it's a subconscious de uh, defense by the official. There was not a word said then. What he did, he made a sign of a traveling violation. Now, I might agree that it might have been a traveling violation, but the, the technical was very, very fast. And... Uh, that's all I can say about it. How could Jim Bain, the official, so far from Foster with all this noise, hear anything? Well, I, I said he made the sign of the walk by rotating his hand. No, Foster nailed with a technical, and it cost him two shots by Macy, and that's like giving Kentucky two points, and they get the ball. They have their biggest lead of seven points again. Now, that type of technical is only a misdemeanor because you don't lose the ball, too. See? If he had the ball, if it worked, then it would have been a felony. That would have been then a possible six-point play. Now it's only a possible four-point play. So Kentucky has a chance to get its biggest lead. Oh. They have it. Rick Proby cuts the weight that lead as he slams it home. Oh, that well, was a tough call to make in this game. That's Kenny Denard. And it may be that young Duke will come unglued now. Denard off the bank. What a oh, play by Denard. Great hands on that catch that time because it was a very tight back. 12 points for Gene Banks. They're still in the 2-3 zone out here. Really strapping hard. Actually, Denard.
Stewart's coming out too far in that 2-3. He's going to get himself caught. I think he's hurt. Yes, he acts as if he's either tired or hurt. He's grimacing. He's giving, he's he's giving a sign. Out. Take me out. That's the guard far left of your picture. Hey, call the referee's timeout and get the kid out of there. Well, he doesn't see it, and of course you can't. If Kenny Denard would get his attention right now, he can't get his attention. He's going to have to cut it out. The, the bench of Duke is trying to get the attention. There's Gibbons, and that was Denard's area. So Gibbons got an easy shot because Denard couldn't cover him. And Duke, he has a cramp apparently, and now timeout is called by the official. And oh, there's Foster and Bain. Bain is the man who called the technical on Foster. And Foster's saying, hey, what's going on here? 16 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the game. Kentucky leads by nine. Duke with the ball, trailing Kentucky, 57-48. Carroll off to Jaminski. Bernarko. Boy, Duke attacked that zone nicely. Bernarko fouled. He had a piece of LeVon Williams as he followed in. Here's where Denard got hurt. Seems to me that he must have twisted his ankle or something in there. There he goes. Let's see what happens. Uh, Billy, I think the knee, Roby's knee caught the inside of his knee here. See, that right, way. Yeah, see. right there. Yeah, there he got it. He got it inside of the knee. It looks like Kenny Denard's all right. He's over there walking around. I think he'll be back in the game shortly. That's not a serious thing, but it's a painful thing. He's been replaced by number 30, Jim Suttis, the freshman. Kentucky trying to build on its nine-point lead with 15 minutes and 40 seconds left. I think there was a big technical foul in the Arkansas-Notre Dame game earlier tonight, which Arkansas won in dramatic style, and that turned things around for Arkansas. We'll see how the teams react to it here in this one. Kentucky taking a little air out of the ball, now. Yeah, I, I think that they're going to force Duke out of their zone. Joe Hall standing across the way, orchestrating, as Slater misses the shot. He was fouled by Harold, number 22 of Duke. There's the young freshman from Pine, North Carolina. Kenny Denard. Oh, what a relationship between Banks and Denard, two freshmen. That was one of the most beautiful pictures you'd ever want to see. Denard and Banks and that dance of joy after the victory on Saturday. Embracing one would lift one and then the other would lift the other. Oh, what it's all about, Coach. Only in college sports. Slater, an excellent free throw shooter. And there it is. As they embraced, then Denard would pick up Banks and Banks would lift him high in the air. A dance of victory. Later, it's one of two, and that's Kentucky's biggest lead, 58-48. Plenty of time left, 15 minutes, 15 seconds. With Denard out of the ballgame, and Jaminski out of the ballgame also. It's going to be up to Spinarco now to really take things over. That's Getch in the post, and someone reaching in gets the foul. It is Gibbons of Kentucky. He is so lightning quick. Or maybe it's Macy. Maybe it's May. It is Kyle Macy. Not nope. given, but jo Macy. Joe Hall didn't want to foul there. He wants to force Duke now to put it up from the outside, and by slowing down the tempo on the other end of the court, I think he's just teasing Bill Foster a little bit, Al, trying to see whether he will come out of the zone yet. What he's doing here is a tighter zone, a 2-3 zone, rather than their famous 1-3-1. One, one. Boy, the ball tipped by Macy and recovered by the ever-present Spinarco. The high lob to Banks. And, oh, that goes to Kentucky as Gibbons went over the back to knock it out of bounds. That lob pass has been there throughout the year, but Gibbons did a superlative job that time being in the right place at the right time. I wonder how he eluded the foul, too. He really can jump. There's, now Duke is bringing their zone out a little bit higher. A 1-3-1 half court. Probably going to trap out of this if they get a man in the corner. Kentucky leads by 10. Number one almost the entire year. Arkansas one week in the polls, number one. Marquette one week. But other than that, from opening bell, it's been these wild oh. Jack Gibbons has 29 points in three consecutive years. He made the coaches all Southeastern Conference team and the Wildcats sell another title. 14, 21 left. intercollegiate athletics in our society. It looks forward to continuing its part in the vibrant heritage of America. Highest priority goes to the service it provides to over 800 voluntary members acting as the true voice of college athletics. Preceding message furnished by the NCAA.
This is Dick Enberg at the Checker Dome in St. Louis, Missouri. Al McGuire, Billy Packer, Kurt Gowdy with me. It's 60 to 48. Kentucky leading Young Duke with 14 minutes remaining in the game. Kentucky has led most of the way. Jaminski back in the game. Oh, Jump what hook. a tough shot. Jump hook by the sophomore Jaminski. He has 14 points. What made that so tough? You can see the Kentucky bringing their zone back into the top of the key now, and it's going to make it really tough to get shots in the inside as he just did there. Duke's coming out one. And Slater. Oh, what a block. And it's going to be goaltending. Goaltending against Jaminski. Great drive. Duke. Great drive by Clater, really playing a positive game out there. The ball goes up, oh, pretty close to the peak right there. 62 to 50 as Clater gets the basket. And pressure is on the Duke Blue Devils. It's here's a steal by LeVon Williams. He could have gone with it, elected not to dribble. Nice play. Well, is this the second flat toe, Coach? Yeah, they're at, they're at a breakout point right now. If they score here now, it's going to be a different ball game. It'll be very tough for Duke to get back into it. It's man to man. And Kentucky really taking advantage of it. Roby, he has such big strides. He went from one side of the basket to the other to score. He has 14. And Kentucky starts to pour it on. Duke will not be able to play a man to man. They're going to be a little bit tired to start off with. And Kentucky too quick to take for him. Jaminski can't hit. Jaminski gets the rebound. And the foul is on number 52, LeVon Williams of Kentucky. What Roby. Look at the big stride on this racehorse from Kentucky. Well, he made a good pump fake, went all the way across the lane, laid it up beautifully, and he's a, a tower of strength. 16 points. What he does so well, he guards the center sometimes, strong forward other times. Really been a good man on the break. Plus, he covers the 94 feet of the court. Very few centers can cover the way he does. Does a nice backdoor play. Jack Gibbons gets the rebound, and with a score 64 to 50, and time ticking away. 13 minutes left. Man to man, this could be tough for Duke right here. Gibbons can't hit, but Roby right there to get. No, he misses the shot. Gibbons gets it. He scores, and he is fouled. Jack Gibbons, 31 points, and the Wildcat pays all are up and screaming again. Incredible power play in hot inside. Gibbons having the game of his life. Puts it back up on Jaminski. Jaminski has to foul him. We're seeing the best of Kentucky right now. A break in the action. 62 to 50. Kentucky trying to win their fifth title. We return to our studios for this message. NBC Sports covers the Greater Greenfield Open next weekend on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time. And big money at stake, $240,000. And that'll be followed as you get a golf doubleheader each day by the Colgate Diana Shore Open. That's a very rich purse for the ladies, $305,000 at stake. And Arnold Palmer will be driving into one of those par threes. And if he hits a hole in one, it's a million dollars to someone. Tonight's attendance, 18,721. And many of them are from Kentucky. And are they in a love affair with this man as they have been for four years? Duke Gibbons. Stick with that man-to-man -man defense that Duke is forced to play now. They, they had to go to it, because even though there was 14 minutes to go, had to come to try to make their move on Kentucky. Kentucky really has taken advantage of it. Bob Bender in the game with the ball for Duke. Spinarco, tough defense. He scores. He's fouled by Cowan of Kentucky. The last time out, Bill Forster says to his club, hey, with 16 points down, we might be 17 down. There's a lifetime left. There's 12 and a half minutes left. Let's cut it down to about six to eight points with about six minutes to go, and then we'll make our final run. At them. They had two very, very tough breaks just before the half on the charge and foul and the technical foul in the second half. Kentucky was leading 51 to 46. Hit the technical foul. They're up nine points instead of five. Bernardo converts the three-point play. He has 16 points in the game, and it's a 66-53 Kentucky lead as Duke goes into some pressure in the backcourt. Kyle Macy is out for Kentucky. Jay Scheidler, the sophomore, is in. Pass by Gibbons that time. Blocked by Banks, recovered by Clater. That's Cowan. Rebound, Banks. Boy, is he strong. Remember, he's only a right. long pass. Jaminski steals it nicely. Spinarco inside, way off the mark. Oh, he might have been passing. He did. I think he passed that ball. It'll go as an attempt, but I believe just out of just classy ball player made the pass. So Spinarco has made five points, two on a pass and on a three-point play, but Ruby has right back to score his 16th for Kentucky. Bender 
Denard. And Kenny Denard hit. Well, I'll tell you, these young Blue Devils don't know quit. the word quit, do they? It's actually, I'm anxious to see which team tires out in this run quicker, though, Al. Somebody's going to have to substitute because it's really a furious face. Give it that. And a great play by Bender to save a sure two points as Roby was alone. Bender, if Dukes would have won tonight or does win, would become the first player to ever be on two championship teams, two different schools. Smart play by Jaminski to hold his ground. Bender picked up the next man after the pass, came up with a big block. Off Gibbons, out of bounds to Duke. So the Blue Devils, down by 16, have cut that deficit to 11 and can get under that double-digit mark, Al, and you feel that's important. It's a psychological thing. I think we should tell the fans that Bob Bender played on the Indiana team two years ago. In the NCAA. Bernard inside the bank. Powers his way, can't hit, but a foul is called on home. Look at Banks and Denard. They appreciate each other. I love that friendship. How would you like to have to coach against those guys for the next couple of years, Al, knowing they're going to be bookends there at the forward position? Uh, they, they're just outstanding, but the emotion, the emotion they have is, is what makes them. That's the first foul on Roby. Gene Banks. Boy, was he highly recruited? What an name thought they might get him? Pennsylvania? He elected to go to two. It's down to 10, 68-58. Plenty of time, 11 minutes, 20 seconds. So they're under the 10-point deficit. Nine-point Kentucky lead, so Duke in two minutes has whittled seven points away from the Wildcat advantage. Interesting that that press became more active and it's opening things up for Kentucky when they go down the court. There it is, tipped in on a 3-1 break by LaVon Williams, and it's 70 to 59, Kentucky. LaVon Williams has his own sewing machine. He makes he makes his own clothes. There's a foul reaching in. And before he goes to the line, let's go back to the tip by Williams. Well, here's what's happening. The press is becoming more active. Things are opening up, though, for Kentucky when they bring it three on one. Williams and Roby both in position to make that tap. So Duke has to take the gamble, Al. They've got to go ahead and press. When they do, if it's ever beaten, it's going to go all the way. If anyone ever doubted the importance of Kyle Macy, we've just seen it. He was out for a couple of minutes, and Kentucky was not the same team. He's the glue that holds them together. He's back in there now. Spinarco from 20, right down the bottom of the well. What a clutch performer, Junior Jim Spinarco. Duke has the top eight players coming back next year. Only one senior, and that's Bruce Bell, and he plays rarely. 19 for Spinarco, a nine-point Kentucky lead, ten and a half minutes left. Gene Banks had a good luck charm when they asked the nod if he had a good luck charm. He suggested Gene Banks. <laughs> I, I agree with him. <laughs> Kenny Denard picks his fellowship carefully and wisely. He has six and made a good defensive play to save what appeared to be a sure hoop. They go in zone out of bounds, and now that they've whittled the lead down, they're staying in the zone a little bit. That man to man was disaster, but Bill Foster had to make the move. We introduced the players for you. A guard for Kentucky, number four, Macy, 25, Scheidler. LeVon Williams, Jack Gibbons at the forwards, Rick Roby at center. Spinarco Bender. Denard, Banks, and Kaminsky, the starting five with exception of Bender, in there for Duke. Yeah, Macy pulled everybody back out and said, let's get organized. He's got the lead and the ball. Forced Duke to play a little bit. Duke's going man to man. We're under the 10 minute mark. 10 minutes left, 70 to 61, Kentucky. Out of bounds on the kick by Bender, and Kentucky will play it from the side. Billy, they're just faking a man-to-man, -man right. and they're setting back into their zone again. They, what have they, to, they have to come out because they're behind with the five count. Right, what they're doing, too, Al, is they're trying to match up a little bit out of it so that they do have some kind of pressure man-to-man. -man. Watch both Bender and Kenny Denard, but they're still in the zone. Scheidler, not there, but there's Gibbons. The omnipresent Jack Gibbons has another rebound. And there he is, the goose. Oh, he's having a night, isn't he? Career. 33 points for Gibbons, stolen by Macy. And Kentucky with an 11-point lead, riding on the shoulders of Jack Gibbons. There he is. Now Duke is trying to compensate so much for Gibbons that they're not covering everybody else. Look at him go for the ball, and a whistle traveling against Kentucky. Do you know, Dick? People seem to think that Kentucky's blowing them out. Hey, it's an 11-point game. We got over nine minutes. 
anybody's ball game. Big basket coming up. Bill Foster trying to tell his team be patient as well. I think that's an important point, Al McGuire, and the fans, reporters, assistant officers, coaches, know the patience of the game. You can't hurry. Coach Wooden has always said, don't hurry, but be quick. Inside the bank, blocked by rejected by Roby. And here come the Wildcats. He and look at Spinar, he was there play. anyway. Amazing play by Spinar, but he faked out to try to block the pass and pulled back in. And looks like James Lee coming back in there with the four fouls on him. Levon Williams goes out. He makes a young mistake. And returning to the lineup for Kentucky, big James Lee, number 32. He's playing with four fouls. Still in the zone in Kentucky. And here's Clem that time. Denard inside the Banks. He's open. Good setup by Kenny Denard. The two friends. Denard the Banks. Basketball at its best right there. 840 left. 16 for Banks. But Joe Hall wants to see Drew getting in some kind of offense right now. A little bit confused. Nobody really going to the back. Why, look at that Spinarkle. He must have eight good long arms, the way plastic man's on defense. He's got to be a little tired also. What's the call? Kicking against Duke. It'll go to Kentucky. Uh, I believe that Kentucky needs a timeout to get their head straight together. They seem to have indecision. And an athlete with indecision is a no-no. You're right, Al. What's happening to them? They, d they don't know whether to hold the ball, let the clock go by, or go somewhere on offense. I think Joe Hall realizes they need some more points. they got to keep playing this game. Too early to go against the clock. You know what? Can I explain something else? I'll try it quickly. What you start with now is what they call milking. You try to move it to the next minute. That makes it eight to the seven. Then you play your regular game. As you get it down around four or five minutes, then you go to delay. A delay is when you take a 95% shot of making it. Then you go to your freeze. When you make your freeze move with a minute or two to go, that means you take no shots under any conditions if you're all alone. That's the strategy. All right, you go from milking to delay to freeze. To freeze. Three different defense, uh, offensive moves to take the clock away, to kill the clock. There's Gibbons. Deflected Good pass. Nicely by Banks. He came a long way to deflect that, and you heard Groby in the background, I'm sure, say, hey, Jack, because he had the open cut, but Banks is great quickness was able to slap the ball away. Hey, Billy, do you know what I just explained? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> the only thing is, that was your technique. <laughs> Dean Smith and some others use others, but that, I think it's very good philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> but Narkel had his hands in the ball again. We are seeing some brilliant athletes on display tonight. Paul and Foster matching their wits. And it's Kentucky in the lead by nine. 72 63, less than eight minutes left. But Spinarco just working himself to a frazzle. He's going to be tired when this one's over. Roby comes high. How many times has Roby come out to be the alpha pass? Not a good shot there. Oh, oh, what a foul by Rick Roby. He's one of the candidates for the Wooden Award for the outstanding player in the country. That'll be announced next Sunday. Got a piece of that one. Jaminski, rebound Sutter. It'll count, and he's fouled by Scheidler. Did my man Harry catch that one? Excellent play on the inside that time by Sutter. He was battling his own people for it. Hey, you see, Scheidler, that really is not milking it, Al. That's a 30-foot shot there, but look at Roby from the top of the key. Came all the way down. Great play. Give Harry Coyle a raise on that one. <laughs> Harry Coyle, George Finkel, our director and our producer, executive producer Don Olmeyer, our great camera crew, 10 of them lit up and firing away. It's a, another major league effort by NBC Sports and to the credit of this great game. We hope you're enjoying it. What I liked about Roby so much in that last play, Dick, was the fact that he was the outlet pass, 25 feet from the basket, then he ends up making his tap right under the hook. Here's that press again. Gibbons helping out. It's down to nine, and said that he made the three-point play, could have whittled another. They need to break a guy to the high post. There he is, James Lee to Gibbons. Bill Walton with 44. Joe holds a excellent job at coach. That is not there. Lee, a power rebound for Kentucky. With 6.45 left, the Wildcats have an 11-point lead, and the Pumpkins, and time has been called. Good time. Good, good call of the timeout. Get reorganized. 
Well, I think that, that Duke is tired at the present time. They're starting to get a little fear. And the hardest thing in coaching is to stop fear in your ball players. There's no armament against fear. You saw Duke play several times earlier this year, Billy Packer. Are you surprised they got this far? No, I'm not surprised, to be quite honest. I think the Eastern Regional was, a, was one of the easiest trips to the Final Four. You know, on our show originally, before it all started, we talked about that. I think that uh, they're a young club. They matured well during the course of the year. And now one of the big things you've always talked about, about bringing a team along, is scheduling. Bill Walker took a chapter out of your book. He said, well, I scheduled some people that were easy to beat. Because I knew I had a hard season, and I needed these guys to get the confidence. Yeah, he matured his team as it came along, and they peaked at NCAA time. Isolate on the star of the game, Kentucky's Jack Gibbons. Well, this is a great pass. We don't see the pass on Lee, but he knew exactly where to go. Jack Gibbons used his body to shield Banks away, made a super play in there. There was a, the experience, Al. When the Kentucky team felt the middle open, Lee just broke to the middle. Gibbons and Roby went ahead and flared on the side and just moved with the ball. Just a super play. Flash into the middle, took the pressure off the baseline. Gibbons snuck in behind him. Then he made a simple layup before a fella tried to dunk in that situation, and that's stupid, but he gets an automatic two points without dunking. And that time out, let's see if they're going to go to a little delay game. Be kind of interesting. They're going to try to bring Duke out, make him go man to man, but Duke still is somewhat in that zone. They're just matching up right now. Joe Hall has replaced Rick Roby with Mike Phillips. He's playing in the center position. This is their freeze, and now they're going to go and, and play. They wanted to see what Duke would do. Gibbons, a rare miss. Rebound, Banks. Big guy can handle it. Monarco. Yo, oh, wow. wow. Pass. He he to see the great pass. That may be the most exciting play in basketball. The well-executed pass for the easy shot. He reminded me of my brother Dick Denny. My brother was really a great pass for the St. John's in New York State Department. Passing is a lost art. Well, it's interesting about that timeout. It helped Joe Hall get his team organized, but also, right when Duke was starting to get exhausted, helped them get a, a, a slight rest there. You see the clock under the six-minute mark. Kentucky by nine. Phillips hits the baseline eight-footer. Mike Phillips of Kentucky, four points. Oh, a good Kentucky team, and they've proved it all season long. And they have five and a half minutes to kill to clinch another NCAA title. Banks can't hit, Scheidler rebound. Oops, travels. That's gonna be a double dribble by Jay Scheidler as Banks hits the wood. Banks is the guy that got the rebound on this play right here. Dishes it out very well. Gonna get the ball back, but he keeps hustling. For the young players in the game, who without that ball keep hustling, you get it back from a teammate unselfishly. That's what Marco did right there. You know, the last play, Billy, where Banks missed that layup on the alley-oop pass, the pass was too low. Anytime you see someone score an alley-oop pass, the pass is the key, not the scoring of the basket. Roy Gibbons and Roby and Macy and Lee, they're going to be on the USA team, and there's Macy with a near steal, but Banks gets it and scores it. <laughs> David Greenwood, Bird, Griffith, Herman Johnson, Moncrief. Joe Hall will be the coach. That'll be two weeks from yesterday. Sports World from Lexington, Kentucky, from the Rupp Arena. A lot of time now. They really went in a delay game. Once again, there's a little bit of uncertainty there. You talked about the milking. They still got to go for the score. There's one. Uh -oh. oh, that's a good block. Oh, they called it goaltending. Goaltending. Can't see that one. Bill Foster can't see that one either. That one hurts. What do you think? There you go right there. The ball on the way up. He gets a piece before it ever came close to hitting the backboard. Looked like a good block to me. Touching the, the backboard back doesn't make any difference, Billy. Oh, no! Denard thought he was fouled. You heard him say, oh, no. Oh, hard play by Denard was trying to draw the charge. Not there. Mike Phillips was all alone. Time running out on Duke. Oh, Gibbons. what a play! Jack Gibbons almost bounced the ball off an opponent's shoulder. Stayed up there and scored. And there's Gibbons again. And a foul is on Gibbons. 
who has 37 points. He's only seven points away from Bill Walton's NCAA final game record. And what a performance. His all-time high for Gibbons, the second man in Kentucky history, joins Dan Issel over the 2,000-point mark. Only five in the SEC in the history of that great conference has scored as many as 2,000 points. And Gibbons punctuating his career, trying to win his team a championship in his finale. You know, Dick, it was really interesting. Before the game, I saw Jack, and I said, you know, good luck. And he was very serious, and the tone of his game was that way. On the other side was Duke University. Kenny Denard came over to me, and he said, hey, Billy, can you get me one of those white NBC jackets? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Why don't you give him one of the tennis you took out of the hospitality room? <laughs> <laughs> I sold the nine. I only got one left on my kid. Benarkel at the line for the Blue Devils of Duke University. He'll be back next year. So will all of the players you've seen tonight playing for Duke. 20 points now for Spinarkel. Been a great tournament. It's had everything. The underdogs winning. Miami, Western Kentucky, an incredible performance by unknown Cal State Fullerton. Duke certainly coming out of the shadows of North Carolina. The Tar Heels getting most of the publicity this year and Duke into the tournament. And then there's the consistency of the thoroughbreds from Kentucky. They've been good all year, and they're trying to cross that finish line with a win that they want ever so much. And no one can quite appreciate all the pressure on a team so good. Well, full court man to man now. They're trying to go ahead and match up. Look at Jim and trying to find an open hole. Kyle Macy coolly nails a 20-footer, and Kentucky leads by 13. Oh, oh, oh holy mackerel. A man can't <laughs> jump that high, can he? Went so high got, that he got burnt on re-entry. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes left, and the amazing young Blue Devils giving Kentucky a great game, but they haven't stopped this man. Go, go! Oh, that hit the side of the backboard. That isn't what he intended to do. You can't cut him that thin. Tony, I give up. I give up to stop. <laughs> 39 for Gibbons. Monarco. Jaminski. Thanks. Well, they're really battling. This is a super effort on the part of both teams. Sanarco hanging, dumping. Banks tip to Jaminski. He's a little tired, but he still hits. 86 75, but time runs on. 3.15 left. There's time. Duke has to make his last charge, and it's coming up right now. 3.11. Trying to get Bender and Denard into the ball game and have some fresh room. Sanarco with a steal. Here it comes. Two on one, set us with Spinarco. He threw it away. The freshman got out of control. That's a possible four pointer, Al. Oh. Exactly. What happened now? You're getting some guys that have just gone to exhaustion. They don't have anything left. So that's executed. Kaminsky really seems tired. Gibbons has two more. He has 41 <laughs> points. He needs three to tie the all time record. Jack Gibbons with an incredible performance. I wonder, I wonder who's going to get the most valuable in this game. Let's do that now. That's a piece of business. Oh, all right. First, we better pay for it. We're going to give away $5,000 to Kentucky. We'll keep you in suspense and tell you who that might be who will win our award. We'll be right back. There's the trophy that goes to the outstanding player in this championship game. It goes to Jack Gibbons School, Kentucky. Kentucky will get the trophy earned uh, from the Gillette Most Valuable Player Award that goes to number 21, Jack Gibbons. A trophy in Gibbons' name will be given to his school. In addition, a check from Gillette for $5,000 will be sent in Jack Gibbons' name to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Kentucky. He has scored on 18 field goals and five free throws tonight. Oh, there he is. Oh, almost a steal. I wonder if he knows he's only three away from Bill Walton. I, I don't think that that's something that uh, really bothers him. The way he's playing, as intense as he is in this ball game, it's just going to come if it comes. Benarco can't hit. Denard can't rebound. Bender fires it up and scores. Bob Bender, 6-2, muscling his way in to get to and a chance at a three-point play. And now it's back to 11. Are they, are they tough kids? Do they get big motors? That means hard. They're hanging in here. They're just unbelievable. This game is not over. I'm telling you, if they make their last charge here, there's over two minutes. I've seen things happen like this before. 
maybe won't have to take back the most valuable player. The so, hand is for Mike Phillips, who has just fouled out, congratulated by his teammate, Coach Joe Hall. Phillips leaves with four points, did not have a big scoring game, but remember, this man got Kentucky to the finals. He led them in scoring in the first three games of the tournament. Made those big, big free throws in the Mideast Regional. Here goes the full court press again. What Kentucky doesn't realize is that Duke is sending all five guys to the boards to rebound. They could easily break a man long for a long pass and a layup. A foul will be called on Bender of Duke trying to stop the charge of Kentucky. 88-78 the game score with more than two minutes left and Kentucky visits that 15-foot strike. They stop the clock. Well, Drew McClater has to make this foul shot. What happens in foul shooting in tight situations, if one guy misses, then the next misses, and it's like the measles. Everyone starts catching it. Wait a minute. What do we see right oh. here? They're not in a free throw situation. Only five fouls on Duke. They're not in one and one yet. Oh, excuse me. Roby back in, and Bender with a try for the steal. And not being in one and one, they can go for some steals now. Pick up a foul. Kentucky with a 10-point lead as Lee goes in. He lost the handle on the way in. Rebound Denard of Duke University. And Denard Hoffman, our statistician tonight. Oh, what a catch. Jaminski can't hit, can't hit the follow-up. Oh, that was a possible three-point play. And look at Mike Jaminski. What am I doing? He said, I couldn't miss two of those if you gave me $1,000. You know, it's incredible when you look at those fellas on the floor. All of those players from Duke will be back. And every guy sitting on the bench will be back next year, except for one fellow. Minsky shooting two. It's down to nine, 88-79. There's a case when we talk about particularly Al with only five fouls on Duke right now. They can use that clock very well now the rest of the way. They also should have a stub over there getting in every time the ball goes dead which stops the clock. I thought that James Lee shouldn't have taken that last shot. That's right, he that lost the handle. That under two minutes you should go after the clock, not the opponent. Minsky has been perfect from the line. And the pressure on. There's the man breaking long. Good catch by Roby. Oh. Roby needed those long limbs to save that one. Duke trying to steal the ball. They can go ahead and foul. I'm trying to make a big steal here. Following tonight's game, stay tuned for your local news, followed by the Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, then tomorrow with Tom Snyder. Foul is on Knuckle of Duke. And we want to thank, while we have a moment, Walter Byers, the executive director of the NCAA. Tom Gernstead is assistant executive. David K. Wood, director of public relations for the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And to our NBC crews around the country, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, we pulled in all the forces, the Army here, to cover this one. A minute and a half left. 88-80 the score. The next one will be one and one situation. He's got six. I was surprised they didn't press man to man. That'll be one and one. Clater on the line. Denard gets the foul. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. One and one for Kentucky. Denard has his third foul. Bill Foster looking for uh, some steals. He trails by eight. And in from the sidelines will come Jay Seidler. No, he will replace Clater and Clater at the line. You know, Al, even though Clater and Seidler are not going to have big statistical games, in the beginning of the game when Duke was in that zone, they hit some real key jumpers. And I think that really took away what Duke has been able to get by with in earlier games. Well, well, Duke had a gamble either on the baseline or the outside. They gambled on the outside, but they're two excellent shooters. They'll come up with key baskets. They've been around a long time, even though they're both only juniors this year. So Clater misses the free throw, but in the scramble for the rebound, Jaminski fouls. Denard goes, I look as if he's going out, stays in. To the sideline goes Clater. Jay Scheidler has replaced him in the backcourt for Kentucky, and Roby visits the line. Uh, Roby and Gibbons, the two fellas we featured at the top of the show, Dick, they sure are quality kids and great athletes, and they've, during their career at Kentucky, you'd have to say that's a memorable period of time, and now we've got to think a name for, those, for this Kentucky ball club. They always have a special name. Time running out of Duke. They trail by 11 now. Three free throws hit by the Wildcats. Inside, Denard to score easily. Kentucky's not going to foul. Quick timeout called by Spinarco to stop the clock with a minute and 11 seconds left. There's an interesting story on Roby. He works at Claiborne Farms, and that is, of course, one of the many outstanding thoroughbred farms in Kentucky. And every day when he's working there, 
He feeds the big horse, Secretariat. And in many ways, this Kentucky team, and borrowing some of your phraseology, Al McGuire, if they win the they're the secretary of college basketball. I would more than say that they're the Seattle slew of basketball. <laughs> and that um, he, he has a great game today. I think we'll see both Gibbons and Roby for the next 10 years in the, in the pro league. A minute and 11 seconds left. 91-82. Dick, you know uh, something that comes up every year in the NCAA championship is the fact they ought to do away with the consolation game because the kids don't care. But I think tonight we saw in that first game how much it means to players of championship caliber. I think our hats should be taken off to that Notre Dame club in Arkansas. They put on a super, super show in that first game. Arkansas winning on a Brewer shot at the buzzer by 271-69. I agree, Billy. That is not called a consolation game. That, that game is called for the third place in the national championship, and I, I don't agree that that game should ever be stopped. Number three in the nation is a very important thing. There's four teams that got here. They never have to drop their heads. Duke, Duke tonight can go out and have their ice cream sodas or their pizzas or whatever they wish to have, and they can be very, very proud of themselves. Have to be. And four of those Kentucky kids and Coach Joe Hall will have a curtain call. They'll take a bow again in a week from next Sunday in Lexington as the USA All-Stars play the Soviet team. Time running out. We'll watch the clock for you. A near steal by the hustling vendor of Duke. Here's the official total on Jack Gibbons. 18 for 26 from the floor. 5 for 7 from the line. Number 21, Gibbons, with 41 points in the game. He still has a chance to break Bill Walton's NCAA record in the championship game. That's a good pass. Let's see if he puts it up. Oh. He doesn't hit that one. And the rebound by Denar. Oh, I Denar would... goes. Jaminski. Nice pass to Denar. Oh, yes. What a play. pretty play. 91-84. Duke refuses to wilt. And this team is going to be back next year. And it's hustle, and it's talent, and it's fine coaching Al McGuire for 10's another great year. I'm upset about that last shot. I don't care about records or no records. The idea is to win the game and go home. I don't think the fella took the shot for the record, but I guess that the way I, 47 seconds to me is again another lifetime. I'm repeating myself. There's only a seven point spread. I just don't believe the game's over yet. What you're I saying like is, forget the record, let's let the clock go by, win the game, go home, and we'll, we'll say I just missed the record by three. Huh? See, the only person that knows it is like the fellow that fights the bull, the coach. He's the only one. He's on the floor there. You know, he has soot on his face. He, uh, he hears the bugles, he smells the uh, the smoke of the war. Now that, like I war. don't understand what he's talking about. Well, he's a war horse. You, 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 it's, it's not over. There's one of the young Kentucky Wildcat cheerleaders. I don't know whether that's a motion or whether she suffered a fall. I, I think so, Dick. I think two Kentucky cheerleaders got hit in the, in the head because they both are holding ice back. They either fell at one of their routines, but they don't want to leave this arena. This is the 40th NCAA championship. 30 years ago, the fabulous five, 1948, Kentucky's first championship. And the names then were Ralph Beard and Alex Gross and Cliff Parker, Ken Rollins and Wawa Jones. And I remember, that's about the first college team that I remember, Al. And Kentucky won it then. They won again in 49 the next year, 51 and 58. And you see the total standing. And the Wildcats are 47 seconds away from their fifth championship. And you know how important this one is. Well, their last, the last two times they got to the finals, they lost. They lost to UCLA and the coach. Coach Wood, who's a legend. And the other game they lost was to the University of Texas of El Paso, which was a great ball game. That was played in Maryland. You know what's interesting about that final, too, is that Kentucky and Duke in the semifinal that year up in Maryland really blasted themselves to exhaustion. And, and of course, Texas El Paso had that great club, well coached, great defensive club. Gibbons misses the free throw. The pass. Oh, two Duke players were there. Jaminski and Denard. Spinarco making the blind pass. That could have cut the lead down to five points. Gibbons has had a field goal attempt and a one and one hasn't been able to make it. Denard needs a saddle for that one as he picks up the foul. 35 seconds left. Watch Macy on the foul line now. He's an excellent foul shooter. You young people out there, the first thing to do is take a deep breath to relax himself. Then he'll dry his hands on his socks. First he'll dry the inside, which he's doing now. Now he'll go back down and then dry the outside of his hands. Come on. 
He goes through a set ritual every time before he shoots a foul shot. I think he ta always takes just three dribbles, too, Al. Watch, yeah. he'll do that, and he'll take three bounces before he shoots. There goes Rick Roby. Roby has been replaced in a standing ovation from many of the fans here in St. Louis. He leaves with 20 points. Macy connects. 92-84. You know who's the next man coming out? There was a the little ritual you saw, and it really helps to be a great free throw shooter, too, regardless of the ritual, because he has a great follow-through technique. Macy misses. Jaminski rebound. Bender ahead. Denard. Trying to get inside, and the foul oh, oh, oh. is on Denard. No basket. Charging on Denard. And the basket is not allowed, and I believe that's his fifth foul of the game. Now we're going to hear a real hand because I think it's time for Goose Gibbons to start coming out. They know the next one's going to be Macy coming out. They'll bring the house down in the Goose League. Macy goes out. Denard, that was not his fifth foul. Macy, cool, only a sophomore. <laughs> he was just the glue that Kentucky needed for those four brilliant seniors. And now I believe they're trying to get the attention of the officials that Denard is committed his fifth foul. Yes, he finally leaves, and a hand from the Duke crowd, and the Kentucky crowd for Kenny Denard. And there goes Duke Gibbons. Gibbons leaves with 41 points. The star of time clicking away. Steal by Bender, and he was fouled. That's the one thing you don't want to do in the ball game, Dwayne Casey fouling him. You want this clock to go and go and go. Joe Hall said it's been tough. The only way we could have had a successful year is to win the NCAA. When we started practice with small people close to our program began the year saying, we know you're going to win the NCAA, not we hope you'll win. It's a shame there isn't more of a feeling of accomplishment for what these young men have already done. And there's one of Bill Foster's four daughters. It's uh, emotion packed. The winners and the losers are both crying. It's extremely difficult for families. I always felt for my family. I was on the court. It was easy for me, but difficult for them. Bob Bender hits two free throws, and Kentucky's lead is six. Only six points. And it's a near steal by Bender. Look at that. Where the starters are, are more confident, and they're older and more mature. Jay Scheidler, he is fouled by Harrell. That stops the clock. Only a couple of seconds ticked away. Three seconds. Next year, we'll be at the Special Event Center on the University of Utah campus in Lake City for the NCAA championships. Oh, it's a classic event. As Kurt Gotti said at the start of this telecast, it may be the toughest ticket in all of sport. I haven't seen him smile yet. I hope, I hope, if Kentucky does win, that Joe Hall will show his ivory. I'd like to see him finally enjoy. It's been tough. He's, he's taken a lot of criticism as a winning coach. He's a great person. He's morally excellent, and he's a credit to basketball. You know, and I think that movie made in the Florida State game has to go down as one of the all-time moves of guts by a coach. They missed it. Kaminsky gets the rebound. 18 seconds. Duke has to hurry. Kaminsky, tough shot. Oh! 92-88 oh. timeout with Good pass. And he needs two on one. Oh, they didn't call a power dunk, and that's going to be it. The University of Kentucky are the basketball champions.